Hello friends and welcome to another edition of Classroom Chronicle. As you can see, we're not in a classroom, but there's a lot of students here learning and making a great contribution. We are at Klasky Common Park as the students from Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech work to put the Christmas lights and Christmas displays out. Rob Gomes is with us. He invited us to come to the park today. And Rob, thank you so much and uh, I guess Merry Christmas, right? Oh, thank you for coming. I really appreciate your support. The kids work very hard and uh, it's great to see you out there. Thank you. Now, the kids have been doing this for years, right? In fact, you told me that you did this as a student. Yeah, uh, a long time ago on Hillman Street, <laughs> at what people refer to as uh, New Bedford Vogue. Uh, as a carpentry student, we walked down here with our tools. And for used me, to walk down. We'd walk down, and I grew up in the far north end. This was like another part of the world. <laughs> and uh, it was exciting then. I also remember coming with my family as wow. a kid, you know, and in the cold weather and getting the hot chocolate and, and seeing all the displays, it's, it's, it's great. It was great for me as a kid, it's great for all the young people and, 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 and the citizens in general of the city. Now tell me, this goes way back. Uh, we can't even find the actual date, but I know a number of people on social media told me their memories of coming here. One I heard grew up in the neighborhood, so uh, he said that he came over and they even let the kids turn the lights on sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there was a lull where the park was not decorated, and then Mayor Fred Kalis brought it back during his administration. And uh, how many, quite a few students are involved in this, right? Different departments, too. Which departments? Okay, um, so as a lot of people would, would assume the electrical kids are out here along with their instructor. And there's more to it than hanging lights. There's a, an infrastructure of piping and handholes under the ground. These loads have to be balanced each year. There's different students and they have to test and understand and make sure all this is done properly. Um, along with those, we have the carpentry students who erect the buildings and, and lay things out according to the plan. Sometimes this changes with new displays. Um, as construction sites are, the different trades work together. So you have the carpenters, electricians, and in this case here, we even have the plumbing students out here to help with the, um, the abundance of things that have to be done last minute. For instance, all these trees being um, set in place, and, and we wanna do as much as we can just prior to the lighting so that we minimize the need for security down here for obvious reasons. Also this year we have some welding students, some of the wrought iron figures from handling from year to year. They get fatigued, they get broken. They're doing some welding on site. So it's just a, a great example of a team effort to, to make something go off good. A little windy here. We got a uh, little snowman blowing back and forth. Yeah. Is that something that you deal with the weather elements every year, don't you? So I'm glad you brought that up. I'm a, kind of an outdoorsman, so the weather, you know, it's just the things I've dealt with my whole life, but it's a great experience for these kids. Some of these students may choose after an experience like this or work into this time of year that they want to do something inside. <laughs> so it's a good time to find that out while they're in school, right? Other people take to it better than others and dress for it and so on. But yeah, the weather is always a challenge. There's sometimes where it just might be too cold for them to be out here or wet or snow. Um, and, and again, we have to take it all down. So we do that in January and the weather is more of a factor. <laughs> yeah. How long does it take? When did they come out here to uh, start this project? Well, generally we get out here um, the end of October and this year they're going to light on the 9th, but it's you know, typically the first week of December they'll light it. Okay. So October, when they get out here, what are they just pre uh, prepping the site, getting it ready and uh, I guess raking up the park and things? Well, when they get out here, we have to test all these strings of lights. They have to, again, make sure the handholes are clear. There's one year they, they unearthed the handhole and we found a snake inside of one of them. <laughs> um, but they, you know, sometimes weather gets in there and they have to, you know, clear those out either with a snake or blow them out. And um, it's just, you know, step by step. And, and the other thing I want to point out is um, every student in these chosen trade areas gets their equal time out here. So part of it's, it's all about, you know, a learning experience. So part of it is revisiting what you may have already done with the previous group to make sure everybody's getting what they need to out of the experience. So um, that comes first, and for that reason, things take time. Are they here for the uh, length of the school day or a longer day? Yes, um, uh, put aside the time it takes for them to do their 
their routine things of attendance and announcements and whatever else might be on the plate for that day. They get on the road as soon as they can. They're typically out here by 8.30, and the school day ends at 2.30 back at school, so they need to be back at school and ready for buses and everything by about 2.15. Okay. Well, what do you say we walk around and meet some kids? That would be great. We're here with the electrical instructor, and that is Keith Kearney, is it? Yes. Okay, yep. Keith, welcome. You said this was, what, your sixth year? It is, it is my sixth year doing this project here for, for, the, for the school. Yep. Let's go back six or seven years. When you first heard about this project, what did you think? I was completely overwhelmed, to be quite honest. <laughs> uh, it, it's a temporary wiring project, and the, uh, Jeff Wildrick was the other instructor that did this before me. He brought me down, and I, he explained it all to me, but as I do now, have it all in my head. Right. He did then, and I, and he brought me around, and I was overwhelming initially, but it's uh, it's good now. What uh, what are some of the biggest challenges of doing this every year? Uh, I think some this year has been the weather. Uh, the weather's been pretty bad, and we it, it was tough. We uh, used the op operate a bucket truck down here with the students, so they have to be trained on safety and whatnot to do that. But then to use the bucket truck. Uh, it has to be a dry area or we'll destroy the park. Right. So that's one of the biggest challenges initially. Um, and then uh, just the amount of kids that I have down here uh, at times where we're moving different sections of the park and keep keeping everybody on task and, and, and working at times. So, um, How many students? I have seven at, a, seven at a time. This is the end of the project, so we have multiple groups coming down and the other senior instructor, Lengov, and helps, helps out with that as well. How long does it take you from start to finish? Start to finish, I think total, if I break it down in a week, is probably about six weeks, give or take. Uh, about two or three weeks with the uplighting, getting the lights into the trees, and then add on another few weeks for the ground wiring and the displays, and then taking it down later on. What's it, uh, what's it do for the kids? What's the experience like? I think it's excellent because they all get to work with the different trades as well as the community, New, Bed New Bedford, uh, the, the city employees and whatnot. Um, they also have the experience of operating a bucket truck. They get fall protection um, lessons in that. They get uh, aerial lift for all different bucket trucks, but then they get to get, get come down here and do the hands-on. Uh, we have many students that go on and work for Eversource after they finish uh, finish their programs here in the electrical shop, and uh, it's, it's great because those kids already have an idea of what it's like to operate a truck like that it's almost right. identical to what they use for Eversource uh, as well as this print reading involved um, it's the National Electrical Code article 59 temporary wiring Christmas Christmas and, mm -hmm. and whatnot um, and and again the print reading is huge because that's initially when I started we didn't have have the prints that I, that I researched and put together and uh, now the kids can come and that's kind of where I start that second half of the year off with all the with all the prints and, and so forth for them what came first for you the uh, were you an electrician or a teacher I've been a, I was an electrician first. Uh, I did have, um, you know, the background in uh, academia. I, I went to college and had a bachelor's in sociology uh, and English. Uh, so that helped the transition, mm -hmm. but uh, I was an electrician first. All right. So. Do you have some students we can I, talk I to? I do. We have All a right. couple over here. I have two of the students from Vogue Tech with me. Hi, what's your name? I'm Anthony Sinaceros. Anthony and? I'm Savannah Barrier. Anthony and Savannah, okay, both from New Bedford? Yes. Did you come to Klosky Common Park when you were younger, before you went to high school? Um, I've came in here before. When I first moved here, I seen the parks and like it looked beautiful. Yeah. And it was just amazing. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, we used to come and see the lights and get it all lit up. Yeah. It's a, it's a routine for a lot of people. In fact, I talk to a lot of people on social media who say they remember, as adults now, they remember coming as kids and now they bring their kids. Did you ever imagine that you would be here being one of the ones that puts it together? Honestly, I never thought it'd be a part of like this great tradition of like lighting up the park that just brings so many kids and people happiness every mm -hmm. year. And I just love it yeah. to be like about a part of this. Savannah, what about you? Yeah, I didn't think I would be here doing it, seeing our community come together and putting it on for them, so. Is this something that you might want to do? Or, you know, you're exploring things you might want to do. Uh, do you, you think you might want to stay with uh, electrical work or contracting? Um, I believe I want to stay with electrical work. It's a good, like, job, and plenty of people need it. Mm -hmm. And it's another way to bring 
like help the community by bringing power to them in a sense. Yeah. Does it uh, help the day go by to be out here, or, or would you rather be inside the warm classroom? Um, being in the classroom is great and all, but being out here and seeing like real work experience and getting like the feel of the trade really makes you want to do it. So right. I'd rather be here. Well, thanks for putting this together for us. Can't wait to see it. Thank you. Thank you. Frank Gonzalez is here uh, in charge of uh, carpentry, right? That's correct. That's correct. Now, uh, there's quite a few displays out here that uh, in, must involve carpentry skills. Do they need work every year? Uh, basically, every year we get some repairs every year. Okay. And how many students do you have out here working with you? Uh, we rotate in the carpentry department close to 40. We have, I believe, 38 on our junior roster right now. Wow. And how many, how many are here today that you have to keep an eye on? We, have, we bring seven out every day on a rotating basis. Okay. So all our students will come out here minimum three days apiece. And I think uh, Rob Gomes told us you start working uh, the end of October on this project? Uh, electrical comes out sooner than us. Yeah. Uh, we've been out here, I'd say, two weeks, almost two weeks. Um, so they come out soon and get working on the lights, checking all the electrical stuff first. How many years have you worked on this project? Uh, I believe about eight years now. What are some of the uh, obstacles that you run into? Obviously, uh, I would think the weather. The weather, that was going to be my first. Um, weather is really the, the, the only obstacle, mm -hmm. I would say. And it's just general upkeep, I guess? On yeah, the that's most of our work is general upkeep and just figuring out where we're going to place everything each year. We try to do something a little different every year for the regulars, so it's not the same. You, yeah, I was going to ask you about that, if yeah. things were always placed the same or, or uh, they, they, it gets changed. They used to, but um, we, we do it different every year, and I think the regulars appreciate it. <laughs> now, uh, do, you, uh, do you bring family out here to see the lights? I will. I'll bring my kids yeah. uh, every year Yep. Yeah. for the and, lighting. And you must have little inside stories you can tell them, right? Yeah, we know where our... Uh, you know, all the secrets <laughs> and good things happen here. Are there new, when you, when you say you like to move things around, mm -hmm. are there new exhibits? Do you build new uh, things? We're trying to add something new every year. And again, I'm not going to mention that yet today because we want the regulars to be a little surprised. Okay. Maybe yeah. we can have a contest or something <laughs> like that. We thought about having some sort of game for them Did uh, you? On, on the opening night. Yeah. Cool. So hopefully we can do that this year. All right. I did learn that some of the displays actually uh, came here from Edeville Railroad. They were part of the uh, Edeville Railroad out yes. there. I guess the, uh, the electrician here at the park also did some work there. Yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, it's fun to see some of those old displays. Some of them have been around for years. I, re yeah. I almost remember them when I was a kid. Yeah, we have to be really careful handling them. Oh, really? Uh, they're, yeah, they're getting a little up there in age. <laughs> but they made things strong back then, didn't they? Uh, not as strong as we would have liked. But <laughs> <laughs> All right, Frank, well, thanks. Thank you. A couple of carpentry students are with me now. Hi, what's your name? Isaiah Scott. Isaiah and? Alex Price. Okay. And you're both from New Bedford. Yeah. What year are you in at Vogue? 2020. 2020? Yeah, 2020. 2020 also. Okay. So what do you like? I mean, you're out here in the park. Do you, do you like being out here? And does it help the day go by compared to being in the classroom? It helps the day go by way fast. <laughs> it, it goes by wicked fast. I would think by the time you get out here, and then you break for lunch, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have to be back for 2.30. That day flies by, huh? Yeah. yeah. It's like a 30-minute drive, too, back to school. So it's like passes. We have to leave here at 2, 2 o'clock, get there around like 2.10, 2.20 to finish up our work. And, and I see the school bus vans, right, that bring you back and forth? Yes. Yeah. Did you ever uh, come to the park when you were a kid? Uh, when I was younger, no, I didn't come here. But I always yeah. drive by to see it. See the lights? Yeah. yeah. There we go. Did you ever think that uh, you would be out here putting all this stuff together? Uh, honestly, no. I mean, well, coming to Vogue, I wouldn't think, oh, we come out here and do this stuff. Yeah. But I like it. I enjoy it a lot. You know, I love working and whenever I can. Yeah. Is uh, carpentry something that you're seriously thinking about for the future? Oh, yes, definitely. Okay. How about you? Did you come when you were a kid? Yes, I did. 
you ever think you'd be out here putting it together? No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> What's, uh, what, what surprises you about, uh, be, what, what do you enjoy working on the most here at the park? The, like, the boots, when we were setting up the boots, okay. leveling the boots, yep. and then putting up, like, the posts to set up the, the Christmas lights. Yeah. So when you put up those booths, what did you say, leveling them off? Yeah, we put pieces of wood underneath. We used like a, a crane mm -hmm. and to lift it up, and then we would put like little pieces of blocks so that we can make it like on a hill. So if it's on a hill, it'll make it like straight. Yeah, the this part, part does it. go downhill a little bit, doesn't yeah, it? Yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, thanks for talking to us, and uh, happy Merry Christmas. You too. Merry Christmas, you too. So you think about the lights at Classy Common Park and you think about the uh, wooden displays. So you can understand electrical and carpentry. But I'm here now with a couple of plumbing students. And uh, first of all, uh, hello. How's Who, it going? What's your name? My name's Chris Bro. Chris? Uh, my name's Baldo. Okay. Thank you for coming by today and for chatting with us. And uh, what's a plumber doing here? What, what plumbing work do you do? Pretty much right now what we're doing is we're helping out other trades, but we're also in the building unclogging a drain so they have the water on, everything like that, and then stuff like that. Okay. So, so there is plumbing work to be done? Yes, there is. Yeah. So when you say helping out all the trades, what, what are some of the things you're doing? We're pretty much, we helped uh, put up lights here too, help the electricians hang the lights, put all the buildings up, mm -hmm. stuff like that. The juniors did a lax cycle, we're just coming in to finish up and stuff. Hey, one thing I wanted to ask that I, I didn't ask anyone else, uh, when you go home after being here all day, do, do you have any energy left to decorate your house? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if mom asks you to put up lights, I mean, it's like, not again. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, I'm very energetic, so yeah, I, I would, <laughs> yeah. How long have you been, uh, is plumbing what you, uh, what you want to uh, focus on? Yes. Okay. Yep. What, what attracts you to it? Why, why plumbing? Um, there's a lot of work to do, mm -hmm. and you know it's a good paying job. Yeah, there's always a future. Yeah, there is. Because <laughs> we're always clogging yeah. things up. Yeah. yeah. Did you come by uh, Klasky Common Park when you were uh, younger? A few times I did. Yes. Yeah. During this time. Did you ever imagine you'd be part of the uh, installation? I have not. No. <laughs> so. <laughs> is it a surprise uh, coming out here and learning maybe where things are and some of the behind the scenes secrets that we don't know? Yeah, because I used to come here when I was little mm -hmm. and, you know, never thought I would be here, you know, helping out and doing this. Well, we're glad you are. Thank you so much. Have a Merry Christmas. You, yeah, too. you too. All right. Yeah. I mentioned before that some of the displays here at Classy Common Park actually came from Edaville. And Rob, why is that? Well, um, as we spoke before, Mayor Kalis and his administration brought this back to life after a short uh, pause due to vandalism and so on. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we were fortunate to have a gentleman called Louis Whitlow, master electrician, and he also was very instrumental at Edaville. So uh, we commissioned him to help where he could, and he brought uh, oh, a host of different animated figures, some of them that you see that move in the paint shop and so on, and helped us understand how to wire them and the circuitry. And, and he would stay in that shop up above. The building's named after Mr. Whitlow, right. by the way. Um, and he reminisce about old times in wiring and, and the electrical field with our students. And my own son, was an electrical student at the time and always asked about him. He's since deceased, but he left a mark on a lot of young electricians, <laughs> uh, maybe not so young now, but uh, with his time and hours spent over here. So that's how we got a lot of figures from, from Edaville. And then some were donated. There was one from a Mr. Lopes, the huge Santa that's over there. And uh, even some of the instructors have donated to, make, you know, to compile this into a better display each year. Is this unique for uh, vocational high school to, to be involved in a project like this, or does it happen in other, do you know if it happens in other cities? 
I think it happens in other cities, maybe not all, but I don't think any to this degree. Um, we're fortunate to have the support of the administration, um, the mayor, and, and the local fathers. And uh, we also have um, we have a large school, so we can we can afford to participate at this at this at this capacity. Is this the beginning of the holiday season for you? It certainly is. I and mean, you, you were know, out here as a student, yeah. and now as uh, as an yeah. instructor. It certainly is, and um, it's a tradition. It's a tradition for me, and. And, and I think it's safe to say that many of the past electricians and carpenters, their, their children are here and probably their grandchildren are here. And for the record, Santa has a list over there and my grandson Grayson's on the list. Is so. that how the names get on these <laughs> lists, huh? You gotta know somebody, yeah, huh? No, you gotta be good. Oh, you gotta, gotta be, be good, good, not naughty. Yeah, right, so. yeah. yeah, New York can have their Macy's parade. We got the Klasky Comedy Park, right? Yeah, good point. Many people refer to this as the common park, or they used to for years, but I had someone ask me uh, why it was called Klasky Common Park, and I looked it up. It was from Harold Klasky. Harold Klasky, this goes back to, I think he uh, lived in New Bedford around 1931, he moved to the city, but in the 60s, he was a state senator, and he was also a counselor at large, and in 1969, the park was renamed Klasky Common Park. I always find it interesting to see where these names came from. Paul Mendes is here. He's uh, the welding. Welding metal fab. Okay. Shop. And how unusual is it to be out here at the park? Oh, this is, I haven't been out here in years. <laughs> it's great. Uh, I take my grandson over here all the time. And um, I was out here when I first sat at a book in a different shop. But uh, this is a blessing in disguise, bringing these kids out here and see that. Now, why is that? Is it uh, because it's really hands-on? Hands-on, and we don't get enough of it. We get hands-on in the shop, but if you come out here and you're doing live work, it's looking at what we do in the shop at school, totally different. Yeah. So everything is like just today, kids like oh wow that's pretty good oh that's how to do that that's how it works yes yeah, exactly yeah. what do the uh, welders work on well we work on a lot of outside projects come in but right now we're working towards our welding certification that we give the kids oh they have to pass the test to get that certification so we're working on that right now but we get jobs coming in and out for the city for Haven wherever maybe they bring something in we Dream it up, we draw it up on AutoCAD, cut out on the plasma table, do whatever, whatever yeah. we need to do. Did you ever think you'd be out here working on this? Oh, no, not really. No, <laughs> no, this is, they came to us the other day and were like, we're ready. Whatever you need, we're going. You can uh, bring the family by when it's all lit up and say, I worked on that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, my grandson, that, Grant, you did that, Grant, you did that. <laughs> he's, he's good. All right. But it's, it's a great thing for the city to do things like this, and for our kids to be privileged to do this. All right, let's meet some of the kids. Sure. All right. A couple of the welding students are here now. What is your name? Tiago. Tiago and Danielle. Danielle, and are uh, you both from New Bedford? Yes. Sir. Now, you were telling me you came here uh, a lot uh, when you were young. Yes. Um, I used to come with my mom and my dad. We would get hot chocolate, you know, walk around, look at all the displays. Yeah. And I knew that Volk worked on it. And uh, what do you think now that you're here, part of the uh, team that puts it together? I wasn't expecting to come today, but I'm really excited. I'm ready to come back now because I haven't been in a while, so I'll come back, show my parents what I did. <laughs> <laughs> what is it you're working on? Um, we're working on the displays right there. Oh, so that's the displays in the middle of the park. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that the, uh, the the big, like the there's a boat and things like that? Boats. Yeah. Yeah. Right there, I think, is a boat yeah, yeah. right behind us, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the that, frames. so the frames, that that's the welding that you do? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. We straightened it out, it was all quickened. Okay. And we ground the, the paint off and the rust too, so we can weld it easier. That's pretty much it. Okay. What year are you in? Junior. Junior? And Junior. Junior. Is, uh, is this something you want to stay with, welding? 
Yeah, yeah. I like it. I what does you like about it? Like everything about it. I like just welding. I like working with metal and kinds of like. Yeah. What about you? Do you see yourself staying in this? Um, as a hobby, because I enjoy the artistic. Okay. Part of it, more like the creative. So. What are you thinking about for your future? You know yet? Um, yeah, like a teacher, I think. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine being out here? This this is uh, considered a, mm -hmm. a teaching day. Yes. Yeah. Do would you do you like being out here, or or would you rather be back in a warm classroom? No, I like being out here, like doing uh stuff for the city, helping yeah. out. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, have a merry Christmas. You too. You too. All right. <laughs> Our thanks to Rob Gomes and all of the instructors today and the students from Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech for talking to us. Not a bad day here at the park as we filmed today. We're in the low 40s with a light breeze, but they've had their challenges this year with the weather, with all the rain that we've had. But Merry Christmas and enjoy the lights this year, and I hope you've enjoyed our little uh, look behind the scenes at how it all comes together. The Christmas display here at Klasky Common Park. For Classroom Chronicle, I'm Pete Braley. Take care. Once there was a boy who did the same thing again and again. One day, he was told he had autism. He got help and slowly learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. What are you going to do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you going to make of yourself? What are you going to make of me?